Welcome to another edition of Crime News with Mark Solomon. It's Wednesday, June 30, 2021, and it's been four or five days since Derek Chauvin has been sentenced. Things have settled down a little bit. Emotions have calmed. Let's hope. Let's talk about that. But before we get to that, don't forget to click like if you're enjoying this video and subscribe and the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If you're enjoying this video, you want to be notified when I upload a new one, click that bell, you'll be notified. So the sentencing of Derek Chauvin resulted in a sentence of 22 and a half years for the murder of George Floyd. Let's talk a little bit about what happened and why. So he was sentenced to 22 and a half years. This is, you know, this is a CNBC article talks about how, um, you know, he, 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 he was less than the 40 year minimum, excuse me, the 40 year maximum that he could have gotten. Um, prosecutor was asking for 30 years, even though there was a 40 year maximum defense attorney was asking for probation. The judge had to decide somewhere in the middle. That's what I want to talk about today. How does a judge come to that decision? But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about what the, the things leading up to, um, the actual sentencing. So here we have, you know, May, when, when was the trial? Um, after that, there was an appeal. June 2nd, there was a sentencing memorandum filed by the um, defense. There was a post-verdict memorandum. Then there was a state's memorandum of the law and sentencing. We talked a little bit about that in a very long video. You should take a look at that. Um, in the, oh, I'm gonna put it up in the corner as a card. Good video to watch, long, but good. Um, there was also uh, the attachment to the state's memorandum. That was his brief. Um, then there was the um, June 16 state's memorandum in opposition to the defendant's post-verdict motions. Then comes what we're talking about, the June 23rd, um, June 24th, then June 25th. So on June 25th, the judge actually sentenced him. Who's the judge, right? We're talking about Judge Peter Cahill. Um, a lot of people would think, well, what kind of a human being would do such a thing? And you could say that from either side, whether you like him or dislike him. And the answer is by looking at his bio, um, this is, you know, in everything I've read about the man, he seems to be about the most neutral judicial official you could possibly get on paper. And with all the opinions about him say the exact same thing, that he is the most neutral and fair, open-minded and, and uh, fair-minded judicial official applying the law equally and fairly. And um, this just speaks worlds. He graduated from law school in 1984. He started working in the um, public defender's office. Um, then he moved on to a private law firm, became a solo practitioner, went on to the um, prosecutor's office in the um, Hennepin County Attorney's Office in Minnesota. And then he became a judge in 2008. So he's been on the bench for what, 12, 12 years now? And um, so with that, he's been a prosecutor, he's been a public defender, he's been a private practitioner, um, can't ask for any more than that. So next thing we start looking at is, um, what did the judge consider, right? Um, and, and to talk about that, I, you know, instead of going through these articles and all the other opinions and emotions, here, here's what I'm gonna do. The goals of sentencing, really important. Every single judge, Every single judge who, um, or, you know, defense attorney and prosecutor needs to know the goals of sentencing, right? You can't just say, well, I, it just seems like a jail case. Ooh, it seems like a prison case or seems like probation or whatever. You, you need to understand these, these goals of sentencing because the goals of sentencing apply whether somebody's in a traffic case or a murder case. And it really matters um, to consider these factors, whether somebody's getting probation, a fine, a jail sentence, a prison sentence, um, these things matter. So let's really look at these. Retribution, deterrence, incapacitation, rehabilitation, and restitution. Um, Colorado, we break restitution out as a separate thing. That's basically paying victims back for what they lost because of the alleged criminal or the, the admitted criminal conduct at that point. So let's just, let's look at the first few. Retribution, victims and their families are injured physically or emotionally, and they need to be, um, you know, not avenged, but they need, there needs to be retribution. People have to pay for what they did. Deterrence means that this person isn't gonna do this again 
or other people aren't going to do what this person did again. And I think in this case, we're going to touch on both. Incapacitation is where um, this person is now being taken out of commission and they can't do the crime because the sentence keeps them from doing it. Um, and rehabilitation, um, obviously, um, to rehabilitate is to um, elevate somebody from whatever state they're in into a state where they can better function. And, um, you know, in the case of, you know, somebody who's been hurt, rehabilitation brings them back into function. Um, in the case of criminal rehabilitation, it's putting them in a place where they're not going to commit crimes anymore. Okay. I'm going to talk about um, deterrence for a minute here. Because um, when we talk about deterrence, um, Derek Chauvin is never going to be a police officer again. Um, but there's a second aspect to this deterrence factor, and that is um, other police officers. He had uh, Derek Chauvin was convicted of murder for putting his knee on on on, on a on a suspect's neck for nine and a half minutes, causing death. I know there are a lot of people who don't believe that. But that's what the jury found. That's what he was convicted of. Is he going to appeal that? Absolutely. But at the same time, that's what he's being sentenced on. And that's what we're talking about today. So other police officers are going to look at that and say, well, I don't want that to happen to me. Um, talking about what happened to Derek Chauvin. Um, and the case acts as a deterrence to where if they think they can get 22 and a half years for violating somebody's um, not only civil rights, but their right to live, then um, they'll think twice before doing that behavior. And that had to have been on the judge's mind. Um so let's go to the next one incapacitation again um he's not going to be able to do anything like this while he's in prison and rehabilitation um you know that's literally where in you know it's called the department of corrections corrections meaning they're trying to correct you as in something's incorrect um department of corrections is 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 supposed to be about rehabilitation to begin with classes training that sort of thing getting you some sort of vocation so that when you are released you can contribute again to society i i you know folks so many people in society feel that derek chauvin was an example of things that are wrong in how people are treating other people from law enforcement to non-law enforcement and that the racial aspect of it is just too prevalent. Did Judge Cahill take that into consideration? Um, I think he would have had to have, um, but does it count for much? I, I don't think so. Um, you know, the, the second degree murder charge um, at least here in Colorado, a 20 some year sentence for a second degree murder charge is not unusual. That sounds about right. So in other words, the idea that anybody could get prison, excuse me, that anybody could get probation for a murder is just laughable. And so when the defense asked for probation on a murder conviction, um, there was just no way that was going to happen. And so here we are five days out and um, Judge Cahill applied the sentencing factors that I think all judges have to apply. Um, he looked at the deterrence factor, I think especially not only for Derek Chauvin, but also to other law enforcement officers in his jurisdiction. And um, I think that with the maximum of 40 years, the prosecutors asking for 30 um, the defense asking for um, probation. This seems like an appropriate sentence. And if you, um, if you disagree, you know, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say, but that's what we've got for today. If you um, have any questions, comments, or suggestions of future things that you'd like to hear in, in any other video, please let me know in the comments. You can email me, tag me on Twitter, or um, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, big racially charged, socially charged um, issue here. I'd love to hear your thoughts.